Hello, welcome to Bookback Commercial. My name is Kim Akia, and today I want to talk about commercial acting resumes, okay? So let's get on into it. Okay, so when it comes to your resume as an actor, you are going to have that one resume that's going to have your television, your film, your theater on there. Now, if you just do theater, then you will have your resume that showcases all of your theater. If you just do television and or film, your resume will reflect that. But a lot of actors also do commercials alongside their television and film and theater endeavors as well. Okay, so for those actors that do all of these wonderful types of acting projects, there's a special way on your resume that you have to list commercials. Commercials cannot be just listed uh, like a theater, a play that you've been in or a television show that you've been in or a film that you're in. OK, it's definitely listed differently. Well, let's get into how it's listed differently on the resume and why. OK, so first off, when you have your resume as an actor, there's going to be a section where you have television, you have film, you have theater. OK, and then you're also going to have a section that says commercials. But guess what? You never, never, never list your commercials. Do not, do not, do not list your commercials on your acting resume. No, don't do it. No, never, no, no, you don't do it. That's something you do not do. And a lot of people are like, why, 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 why don't you do it? Why? I don't, I've been, I'm, I'm proud. I'm going to showcase. Uh -uh. Let me tell you something. The reason why you do not list your commercials on your acting resume is because it could potentially be a conflict in the future. Okay. We've talked about this before. In one of my videos, I've talked about conflicts and maybe I'll do another video just like separately talking about conflicts so that people can understand them a little bit more. Say, for example, you are non-union and you submit to a, let's see, Toyota commercial. Uh, it's a non-union Toyota commercial and it's in perpetuity. They pay you, I don't know, $1,500 for in perpetuity on uh, digital media or something like that. You're like, oh my God, Toyota commercial? Yes. This is phenomenal, like $1,500 at that point. I need the money. The money sounds good. Like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of money. Like Toyota's a huge brand. This is a great opportunity for me. In perpetuity, they're going to be using I'm going to be on their website forever. I'm going to be on this on this mobile app forever. Like, yes. Charles, no. But we all have to start somewhere, okay? We've all started as non-union. We've all started in the beginning, okay? So say, for example, you submitted, you got the audition, you booked the Toyota commercial. Okay. Now me personally, I would recommend you not submit to any big brand car company that's in perpetuity. That's me personally. I would recommend that, but talk to your agent and your manager, but that's something that I personally would not do. Okay. But say, for example, hypothetically, you went ahead and did that. Okay. And then you listed it on your resume, Toyota principal. Um, and then the, you know, the name of the director and the production company. Now, let's fast forward five years to where you have become a successful actor. You are working on television shows, films, like you've done a ton of commercials since then. You are in a really good place in your career. You're moving upward and onward. You have really good representation now. You're in the union now. Congratulations, okay? Your agent reaches out to you and says, Honda is doing a brand new global campaign and looking for a dedicated spokesperson um, that can be in X amount of commercials for the next five years. This is like a multi-million dollar contract. They really like your look. Um, and I pitched you to them and they want you to come in for a callback. OK, but we need to check your conflicts first. OK, now this is a multi million dollar contract. You're going to be the face of Honda for the next five years. OK. And they want you. Let's check your conflicts. Do, 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 do a little research, do a little digging. And trust me, they're going to do their research. They're going to do their digging too. Trust them, leave them, not just on your resume. And then they notice on your, at this point, and maybe you took it off your resume because you're, you know, your agents or you learn, you know, since the five years that it shouldn't be on there. Anyway, somewhere through the grapevine, they find out that you were in a Toyota commercial, principal on camera for a mobile app or a, for for digital media, but it was in perpetuity. So you're on this specific 
um, mobile mobile app that they have or like something on, on on new media. You're on there forever. Like you are the principal on camera for Toyota. They find that out. And guess what? They're like, never mind. Um, we're we're going to move in another direction. You literally just lost out on a multi-million dollar contract with a huge car company brand that could have changed your entire life. That could have elevated your career. You could have worked with some of the a, a top director in Hollywood who then now wants to cash you in his feature film alongside Will Smith when your contract is over. Like, you know, you, like you, the career opportunity that will come out of being on that multi-million dollar campaign now has went down the toilet. So that's a conflict. The conflict is there are two competing car brands. You have Toyota and you have Honda. And if you're in one of those, the other brand is not going to want to have the principal on camera actor from this commercial in their commercial. It's a conflict of interest. So you, it's not going to work. They're not going to want to hire you for that. So that's what I'm talking about. That is a conflict. And so with that being said, that's why you do not want to list your commercials on your regular resume. OK, you, what you're going to do, you're going to create a separate resume for your commercials. Now, some people call it a commercials list um, or, you know, you can call it a commercial resume. Same difference. Basically, it is a resume or a list of all the commercials that you did just for tracking purposes and for your representation. That's what I see the, the major benefit of having a commercials resume, a commercial list, because, you know, you're keeping track of all the commercials that you've done. And then, you know, if your manager and or agent, they need that list for whatever reason, you can easily send that over to them. And so the two of you will be really the only two people that have that list. OK. And another reason it's really good to keep a commercial list or resume is to really just keep track because especially if you're booking a lot of commercials it's going to be hard to figure out like oh shoot I think I did this or I did yeah this brand oh yeah two years ago I did like just put it on your resume just list it out so that this way you don't have to remember all the commercials that you booked okay it's right here in front of you every time you book a new commercial when you finish filming come back update it and put it to the side and you don't want to put that list on your website. You don't want to put it, you know, on Instagram or Facebook, anything like that. that's a private list that only people that request that can get that list. And the people that are requesting that are maybe like ad agencies, account executives, casting directors. Um, you're going up for a commercial or they need to check things before they book you for a commercial. Um, maybe you're close. Maybe they want you. They, you know, an avail check comes up or something of that nature. Then they will, you know, request that. OK, so outside of that, you do not want to showcase that at all. Um, and if they do come to you and, you know, you can provide it or you can just let them know, you can look at your list and let them know, you know, if there are any conflicts. No, there are no conflicts. Or here's my list and then they can look for themselves. OK, um, so that's the main reason why you do not want to list commercials on your regular resume because of conflicts, because you could really just, you know, literally kick yourself out of a job, out of a, an amazing, lucrative job. Um, that could be a life changing experience for you in so many different ways. Um, and so with that being said, I'm going to show you my commercial list or my commercial resume. I've changed all of the names <laughs> of the actual commercials and the directors and production companies for privacy purposes, because I do not need, um, a Lexus uh, account executive seeing this video and they want me to be, <laughs> you know, the face of their next Lexus commercial. And they see that, oh, Kim, Kim did a BMW commercial. Oh, never mind. We can't go with her. No, 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 no. I don't play those games. So everything on here has been changed. <laughs> so this is exactly the format of my commercial resume, my commercial list. But I've changed all the names, um, you know, for my personal privacy. OK, so as you can see at the top, because I'm in the southeast market, I put southeast, you can put northeast, you can put or you don't even have to put anything there. Um, and I do have a commercial agent. So my commercial agent's information is listed at the top with her telephone number and her uh, email address. And 
please do not try to reach out to this number. It's a false number. It's a false name. It's a false email address. I'm never going to put my agency's information out like that. I mean, you could search for it and find it yourself, but I'm not going to. This is for educational purposes. This is not like for you to like dig and try to, I don't know. People are weird out there. This is just to teach education. I'm just showing. Okay. Next, um, I have my name, Kim McKee, uh commercials resume. List all the commercials. I was a principal and I need to update that. There's a couple more that I need to add to that. Um, and then I'll put the name of the production company slash the director. Then we go to promos. I've been in a few promos. List those promos. I've been a principal. You have the name of the director and the production company. Then industrials. I've been in a ton of industrials. Um, I've been principal and host um, for a lot of those uh, industrials. And then I'll put the um, production company and or the director. Voiceover. I put voiceover on this as well. Um, have some voiceover experience. So principal and then again, the production company and or the uh, director. OK, and then print. And those are just the three print campaigns that I was in. OK, so this is what a basic commercial resume or commercial list should look like. It's very simple. You I broke it up into different types of commercials just for um, it's easier to read, easier to understand for my reps or if they forward it over to somebody so that they could clearly see if there are any conflicts or not. Basically, that's all they're looking for. OK, and if they do see something that kind of like mm, this is possibly a conflict then they can look into it and ask for a contract or ask like when when did this expire or you know get that information so that's what you want to do for a commercials resume you want to create a separate commercials resume or commercial list keep it to yourself it's for you and your reps only and then um, on your regular television and film and theater resume what you want to do is under commercials under that commercial section you want to put list available upon request or available upon request um, either one of those will work because basically that's just saying if they want to see the list it will be made available upon request so whoever requests it um, not whoever but if somebody at that level you know like a casting director or account executive or somebody at the ad agency um, somebody that works for the actual client um, if they want to see that then it is available if they request it basically that's what it's saying but you're not listing your conflicts on there um, you want to keep that to yourself OK, so that's basically, you know, uh, the gist of a commercial acting resume um, and why you need to have a separate commercial acting resume outside of your television, film and theater. And uh, the reason why you have it separately and um, why it could potentially cause conflicts um, if you have your commercials listed on your regular resume. OK, so you never want to do that. Your actors access, your casting networks, any of those online sites you definitely still want to put under commercials, list available upon request, okay, or available upon request, okay? Um, I think... I think that's it. I think that's about it. So if you have any questions about the commercial acting resume um, or you need help with, um, you know, Formatting the commercial acting resume. It's really simple. I made mine in Google Docs. Um, it's nothing major. Keep it simple. It's just really a list, a tracking list for you to keep track of what you've booked, what you've worked on. Um, and yeah, if you need any assistance in the area, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I'm here for you. Okay. And I think that's it for today. So I really hope that you got some knowledge from this video. Uh, head over to bookthatcommercial.com where I've got some freebies, I've got merch. And I'm a commercial audition coach, so if you need help with your audition for a commercial, let me know. I'm here for you, okay? Other than that, have a wonderful day, y'all. See you next time.